Okay. Step through the first two steps really quick. Do you want me to cover Cura just in case? Um, no, because if I get stuck, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out as best I can and then call you back if I need to. Absolutely. That, and that's perfectly fine. I think I have simplified 3D at my computer at home, just not here. Uh, yeah, so, so I should be able to walk you through that. If, if you ever have that case, I should be able to research over a night and give you more information the next day. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Awesome. So you know the kind of steps to print. We're obviously going to create that file and have an STL, and then we're going to slice it and send it to the printer. So let's take a focus on one of the troubleshooting of the printer and how it works. So if you want to go ahead and take your printer, we can go ahead and plug it in and put an SD card into the front. And I can okay. set the cameras to show you that. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I've got them set up in the other side of the room. I'm just going to take a minute to set it up right in front of me here. So it's just right here. Sounds perfect. Take your time. All right, just give me one minute, two minutes. Okay, I've got plugged in here. And does it take the full SD card or does it need the micro? It takes the micro SD card. All right. It should have uh, a USB adapter with an SD card in the back of it, and that has files already on it. Okay, but I'm just gonna put this SD card in the slot here? Yes, right underneath the button at the base. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, it's in there now. Great. Have you put together your spool holders? Yeah. All right, just want to double check. That's a, that's a cute little design for your spool holder. I know, they're super simple, aren't they? Yeah, it's good. I, I, have, a laser, well. I, have, a laser, I have a laser cutter and uh, I appreciate that design. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Okay, so I've got my spool holder kind of set up and my printer right here with the SD card in it. Sweet. So we actually outsourced these to one of our schools that have, uh, we've, we've worked with a whole bunch. And he has oh, cool. a laser cutter, so he cuts them for us. Nice. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put my spool and stuff up. And so the first topic, of course, is you want to make sure you slice your files right. And I'm sure as you've had so much experience with, you know, printing already, you realize that there can be a lot of problems in a slicer itself rather than yeah. printers do it. So... Um, that's the first one that we typically go over, make sure all the settings are right for the printer. And then the second one is going to be basic mechanical inspection. And now I realize you probably had a good detail of experience with your maker gear. Um, so you probably understand everything that's going on within the printer itself. So if we take a quick look at it, it's just basically going to be a couple motors and the belts and then the limit switches, right? So I'll show you where those are real quick in case you do have an issue with those. So first off, we're gonna have our extruder assembly that is on the X axis right here. And of course we have our belt, so we wanna make sure there's a good amount of tension there. Our X limit switch is here, directly all near to the standoffs. Yeah. And then we have our X motor here on the left-hand side. We're going to have our extruder motor here in the back. We have our Z motor here at the bottom, and then our Y motor here in the back with, along with the limit switch right here. Got it. And then our final limit switch, the Z, is right down here, right above the front of the screen. Okay. And now we can go ahead. The This is a Bowden tube extruder. I'm not sure. Does the Maker Gear have a Bowden tube? I have a what? A Bowden extruder. I don't know. So the things that actually have this kind of tube that goes to the hot end that it's fed in a different location is called a Bowden tube. So oh, okay. Here that you have a feeder gear and then a, a idler pulley that keeps that pressure on the filament so it pushes through and then it gets to the hot end which is over here. 
Okay, it doesn't have that. It just has it coming into the extruder. Then it's it's called a direct drive extruder. And so okay. the, between the two is these are much better about not clogging because right. you don't have that heat creep from the extruder coming up into this area. Because a lot of the times the heat from the motor itself and from the heater block causes kind of issues in between there. It can cause clogs quite easy. Okay. So these button tubes are really nice about that and they're pretty forgiving. So that's just a little bit basic overview of the printer here. Uh, do you have any questions about that? No, yep, I got that. Absolutely. All right, so the third step is gonna be leveling the build plate and this is an all manual machine. So it's going to entirely revolve around you leveling it and going through the process. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the button. And we're just going to go down to setup. Got it. And then auto home. Got it. You uh, okay? I'm on auto home. Yep. And then you can go ahead and push it, and it's going to home to the very front left corner. That's its preferred home state. It kind of varies per printer. And now it locks all of our motors in place to because it's in its mind it's trying to prep for print. So we need to disable the motor so we can level the build area. So go ahead. Click again and go into setup. Uh, it's still moving down though. Yeah, absolutely. So whenever it finishes moving, you'll go into setup and click disable motors, which is right below auto home. Okay. Just let me know whenever you get that. So typically we level this with a piece of paper. Uh, you can also eyeball it if you feel comfortable with that. Um, but we can go ahead and start with a piece of paper by itself. Okay, I got down there, so I'm gonna go down to uh, controls. You go to setup again and disable motors. Got it. Wonderful. So now we should be able to move everything back and forth, which means we're at zero Z, which is where we want to be to level the nozzle. So typically leveling the build plate to the nozzle and not like leveling it flat, right? So to do at this point is we like to I like to point out the three spots on here that we're going to adjust and they're a little hard to find but they're under the build area so I'm gonna this up and you'll notice inside here that we have the springs right here okay yep Sam and then we have two on the outside so we have one on the inside and two on the outside okay and these depending upon if you turn it to the right it's gonna pull it down if you turn it to the left it's going to let it up okay, okay. So we're going to align the nozzle with one of those springs. So I do the inside one first because it's hardest. And then I'm going to put the paper in between those two, the nozzle and the build area. Now that is trying to show us the gap of 200 microns because each sheet of paper is 100 microns. So we fold it in half to get 200. Oh, you want me to fold the paper in half? Yeah, fold it hamburger style. I find that way to be the best. So the reason we do have 200 microns is because 100 is just a little too close because blue lock builds, they, they adhere the plastic really heavily and it would basically become cemented. Okay, so. Hold the paper hamburger style. Yeah. And then we're gonna line up the nozzle with one of the, right above one of these springs. Yeah, got it. And put the paper in between the two, and then we want to feel if there's any resistance there. So we're looking for a little bit of drag on the paper. If you can't get the paper underneath, you can push down on the build area and slide it underneath. And if it's too loose, then you can adjust it. So which, which case scenario do you have with that printer? It's not going up. Okay, I got it. All right, so I've adjusted the screws, so it's, there's just a little bit of tug on the paper now. All right, and we're gonna adjust each one all the way around. And so you okay. seem very proficient with your hands. So it should be quite easy for you to do the rest of them. So if I twist, mine was a little low on this side out here. So I twisted this to the left in order to make the bed go up. Um, okay. So yeah. let's we'll see, we'll move it up and righty tighty, we'll move it down. All right. Hold on. With mine, it has that has a drag, almost like it's vibrating kind of thing. 
Now you can also do that with your eyes if you prefer. If you just want to make a thin gap all the way on the build area by looking at it from the side, that is fine too. It just depends on what you feel comfortable with. But that's basically our most basic way is the paper is really good. Right, so I, got, I got all three of them lined up and they've had a little bit of drag on them. Sweet, sounds good. All right, so now what we should do is we're gonna take a little bit at some of the settings that we have inside of the printer. So the first thing is, is that we have our fail safe on this printer is just unplugging it. And it's gonna cancel the print, it's gonna cancel everything, but if you are having issues, if it's making screaming noises, just unplug it, it will not hurt the printer whatsoever. Okay. The one thing you can do is just simply unplug it. And that's how to turn it off and also it's fail safe. Okay. So apart from that, if we go ahead and take a look at the controls and stuff here, so I'm going to click the button once. We have setup, which we noticed does kind of like predetermined functions, and then we have controls. So controls is where all your goodies are going to be, and it's going to allow you to change multiple values in here. So you can change the nozzle temp directly from this, the speed it's moving at, or the flow percentage rate. Now the one I did want to show you most of all was the move axis. This allows you to tell the computer itself to move each axis. So if I click on move axis and go down to move one millimeter, then click move Z. Yep. And then I can turn it up and it's just gonna raise that, that X axis bar without me having to touch the printer at all, besides the interface. Okay. Way to kind of utilize that if you prefer. Um, if you like to just move with your hands like I do, I just typically grab the back spiral and spin it as long as the motor's disabled. Okay. okay. So that Z axis will take me back to where I said Z at with the, with the screws, yep? Yes, yes, okay. same thing. So now we can take a look at setup and I just wanna show you a couple values in here. So if you click the top value, it'll always go back. The very top value in any screen goes back one. Yeah. And then let's click on setup and you'll notice in setup that we have two preheat values. We have a preheat PLA and a preheat soft pool. So preheat PLA is going to heat the plastic to 220 degrees, which is our preferred printing temperature. Yeah. And that's as simple as it is, it just preheats it. Now on the preheat soft pool, it's a little bit different and this is kind of moving into that filament issues. So if you are having problems with filament or you're pulling it out because you just finished the print and it already cooled off, then we recommend using a soft pool. It heats it to 100 degrees Celsius so that it kind of has that transition state between solid and liquid and it yeah all of the materials that are inside of your nozzle and your throat tube and it pulls it out with it. So okay. for example, I did that last time I pulled mine out and you can see here that it has a very weird shape, but that shows you how clean it is. So also right here, you can see that there's a very small point to that. Yeah. A point was the casting of my nozzle. So I know it's wow. fairly clean. That's pretty cool. This is a very nice way in order to make sure your nozzle's clean, and you can also do this on your other printer. Like, it's a great tool to have and to realize that pulling it out when it's in that transition phase will do a lot. So just heat up the extruder to 100 and softly pull it out. Yep. So that's okay. once it's already cooled off, then you heat to 100. If you let it go down to 100, it's not in the right phase. So you want it to be a solid to a transition rather than a okay. liquid to a transition. Okay, that's clear. Yep, awesome. So that's one tip we have for filament. Now the other one, we can go ahead and click on the button and click setup and preheat PLA just to heat it up. Now one thing we did a little bit earlier was we raised the Z axis, but I did that on purpose so that when we preheated, it wouldn't burn a hole into this build area. So if you notice kind of on this build plate that there's some scarring here. Yeah. That's from basically oh, so I I should lift up my Z axis right now. Yeah, if you're preheating, you should lift up your Z axis or this arm so that the nozzle is not touching the build area. Okay, and? Close enough, it'll erode a nice little hole. It's not gonna cause it to fail ever, but your prints will have a little bubble on the bottom afterwards. Okay, so let's see here, can I go controls? Yep. Uh, move access. Right. Z, uh, move one millimeter and then Z. 
Okay, we'll move one millimeter and then Z. And you can move it to whatever you want, like 20 or 30 is fine. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So now and then I can just hit exit, 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 yep. set up. And then P, uh, preheat PLA and it's warming up right now. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So these okay. are pretty simple, pretty easy printers. They have a nice, simple interface to them. Then you're also going to have this front screen, which kind of reads out everything. So you're going to have your X, Y, and Z. So it does tell you the coordinates. And then this top emblem here is going to be your extruder. And it has the top temperature is what it's heating to. And the bottom temperature is what it's at. Cool. Cool. So mine is right at about 220. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip my piece of filament. So we like to clip these at an angle to make them feed through the Bowden tube a little bit easier, just like so. Makes life a little bit easy. Okay. And then, in order to feed this through, and you can probably follow along at the same time, yours will heat up before long. Uh, it's at 220 right now. Oh, perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed it into this small hole right next to the Z spiral axis. So all we have to do is squeeze the trigger to release the puller, the idler pulley, and then push yeah. it through the tube. Okay. I'm gonna push it all the way through, and then you should hit and feel resistance, and then it should be able to squeeze just a little bit more and push extra plastic out. Okay. Now the reason we did that, once you push a little bit more after you hit that resistance, is to kind of push out any old colors you may have. Or oh, yeah, they they test it with the green, I can see. Yep, so that's our test color, so we wanna make sure you print in the right color. So we just keep pushing, do I just keep pushing it to remove small clogs and to remove old colors. Okay, so do I just keep pushing until my color comes out? Yes. Okay. And so you can also do this in a in another kind of um, mechanic or mechanical on the printer, and that's just yeah. the access extruder like we did with the Z. Now the extruder will only move if you have it here. We say that again? I didn't catch that. I'll Certainly. Like so you can also cause it to feed itself by doing the same move axis that we did with the Z, but it has to be heated for it to move extruder. Okay. We, uh, that's just like a, if you don't want to put, pull the trigger and push it, you can always tell the machine to move that gear in the back. Okay. Um, and to do that, I'd, I'd go down to setup. Yep. So go ahead and go to controls, right? Okay. Move axis. And then one. And then you can click on extruder. Okay. And that value allows you to change and you'll notice that the gear will move into and start extruding, right? I hear something. Oh yeah, yeah so okay. Take, right. Okay, and to stop yeah. that, I, I just uh, do what? And it, it'll stop itself once it's finished extruding that length. Okay. Oh, that's the length, the eight millimeters, it, it pumped out. Okay, I got it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically that's just a, you know, a way to do it without having to push it through with your hands. Okay. It, it needs to get past that point where it pushed into the extruder though. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. Sweet. So the only other thing that I have to tell you about the filament is going to be there's a small little needle in your toolkit, and that's yeah. just a nozzle cleaner. And you can yeah. by heating up your nozzle to 220 and then flossing it basically. Okay. And it's just a small 0.4 millimeter needle. Okay. Okay. You can just push it up. You have 0.4 it nozzles, by the way. These have 0.4 millimeter nozzles. That's a setting you'll have to put in to simplify 3D. Yeah, I see that nozzle diameter is set at 0.4 right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sweet. So now we can kind of guess what else do we have? We just need to print. And maybe one other filament topic um, is if you leave it like it is right now, so we have it heated, there's filament, but it's not moving. And that causes a problem. It can cause this to bake inside, and that can create a clog itself. So in this case, if you do have it heated, maybe someone came over and stopped a print, which doesn't cool it off, 
If they just click on the button and click and scroll down to stop print, that does not pull off the printer. So yeah. you unplug it in that case to make sure that it doesn't bake inside. Okay. That's, that's the only other uh, topic I think we have. So we can go ahead and click on the button one more time and go to print from SD card. Um, it says no Let's SD card. Refresh SD card at the bottom. There you go. Clever. Perfect. And okay. Go ahead and go into the test prints folder that you should have. Um, you know what? I, uh, the, the SD card that I have was the one that was in the case. I don't think it's formatted or anything or has anything on it. Is there a different card? There is a different card. So there should be a USB card, like a little USB adapter. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, and that one should be formatted. Okay. And you can just swap them out and do the re refresh and it should be good. Um, oh, there's an SD card in here. I see. Okay, cool. Yep. Oh, I yeah. got it. Yeah, so we give you an extra with a regular sized SD card, and then we should have given you a USB per printer. So you should have three. Got it. Okay, there you go. And test prints, got it. Yep, test prints, and then you can choose whichever file you would prefer. What's the fast one? Six-sided dice is pretty quick. It's like 20 minutes. Okay, I got it. And then, so one thing that we like to do is we like to watch that first layer in order to make sure that it's going to stick and stay. I'm right. sure you have a little bit of experience with that. Now, these printers, when they're printing, you can adjust the build area at the same time if you would like. So if you watch it and it doesn't seem like it's quite sticking on this corner, yeah, go ahead and go in here and adjust it and make it higher. And that's okay. fine, and that's what I do most of the time. Most of the time, I just schedule a print and level it while it prints. So mine's looking a little bit high because it's not quite sticking, so I'm going to raise mine up just a bit. Yeah, mine's, mine's doing perfectly. I'm sorry? Mine's running perfectly. Awesome. That's good to hear. One other thing you could you could take a look at on that SD card that you have in the printer right now, it does have a little like a JPEG image that has all of our settings that we put into Cura. So if you need something to guide you whenever you're setting up simplified, that's yeah. so I can take it out of the printer once the job started. No, you can't. So wow. what? Yeah, you have to leave the SD card in there because it needs to read off of it. Okay. So also plug a computer directly into it, but the only problem with that is if the computer falls asleep, so is the printer. Okay. That's why we provide you with an SD card per printer, so you can leave them in there. Okay. Um, so, okay, that's cool. So, you probably know the printer, though. So, can I, um, let's go back to the cool down. If, there, if I stop a job and I've got my filament in there, um, how long will it take to bake that filament in there? Close to 15 to 20 minutes. On okay, so if it's going to be 15 or 20 minutes, I should cool it down. And there in the control setting, there's a cool down function, right? There is. Yes. Okay. In setup, if you go all the way down, it says cool down. I saw that. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, that's, that's it. All right, so could we um, – I'm looking at my configuration assistant for Simplify 3D. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm going to put in uh, NWA 3D. And co so it's a Cartesian robot with a rep wrap with, yes. the, mar with the margin, right? Yes. Or, I'm sorry, Marlin. Marlin. Marlin, right. yeah. That's it. Exactly. And then, and then the baud rate is set at 15200. Is a one, I'm sorry, 115200. Is that right? Which one? What was that? It says baud rate and it's set at 115200. Yes, that's right. Okay, cool. And then it says uh, X, Y, and Z access the build volume. It says 100 by 100 by 100. Let's set that to what? 125 by 150 by 100. Okay. So Z axis is at 100, the Y is at 150, and the X is at 125? Absolutely. Okay. And then the nozzle diameter you said is uh, um, 0.4? 
Yep. And uh, filament diameter set at 1.75. Yep, exactly. 1.75. You got and it. Number of extruders is one, and um, and it's unselected for preheated bed. That's perfect. If it's unselected, it should run great. Okay, awesome. So um, now, so that's Simplify 3D and. Uh, um, and so I can set up my supports and my infill. Let me just do that real quick. I'm just going to set the infill at real low just for a test print here. Yeah. And no. Um, can you talk about rafts for a second? How, like, what's the relationship with rafts and the non-heated bed? So we don't use rafts ever. Okay. The reason for that is this blue build, lock build. Um, that's because it sticks so well typically to this surface that you don't need a raft. Now, okay. if you are looking for an object that has a very nice bottom surface and you can't get your bed quite leveled right, a raft is great for that. Okay. And then supports, obviously, if something's overhanging, you're going to add your supports as needed. Yeah, just as average, right? Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, so that's great. And uh, from Simplify 3D... Oh, okay, so that's there, and that's there. Okay, cool, awesome. So I can just say okay, and I can say prepare to print. And I'm just going to take my SD card out of my other guy. Yep, and just save it onto it. Um, I um, how did the print times compare with other printers? That's something I didn't look at before I bought them. So it's basically average. There's pretty much like a, a streamlined effect with the printers that are this type. Cartesians are typically stuck at about 50 millimeters per second on okay. everyone. Um, okay. Unless, you know, it's a multi, you know, thousand dollar printer, it might be faster and it might put better quality out, but all general desktop 3D FDM printers are going to be 50 millimeters right at about. And okay. so you can change the speed up to 60, but you may start seeing defects in your prints and it might knock it off. Okay. So, and cool. you can absolutely, if you slow down that speed, if you change it to 35, it can actually improve the quality of what your prints look like. Okay. Um, and do you have any best recommendations or best practices for how many prints I could have on this um, on this bed. So I guess I'm asking like, if I have 20 things to print out, is it faster to go one at a time or is it faster to go 20 at, you know, on that bed? I would say it kind of just depends. Uh, I would usually load those files into a slicer, check out the, you know, time that it requires for each. Right. Group them and see if it's, you know, comparable. Um, typically, uh, Grouping them saves a little bit of time, um, but printing them separately works as well. Uh, I find that grouping them does save a, a small amount of time, though. On yeah. it, it's still going to take the same amount of time to print it, whether there's six on there or one on there. Okay. Uh, each object's going to take the same amount of time. Um, if I if I did have a bill that took hours and I and I left uh, the room and came back. Um, obviously, I'd be concerned about the filament being stuck in the extruder. Um, what's best practice for cleaning that out? So the filament, uh, if you like leave the room and the print finishes, right? So like you leave it on overnight and it prints and it finishes sometime at midnight or right? Yeah. Morning, well, it's going to cool itself off when it finishes printing. Okay. When it finishes, it will move to the side and it will cool off. So you shouldn't have any problems in that regard. And okay. then or you want to pull that filament, say you want to change the color for the next print, do uh, a soft pull. Soft pull, okay, got it. Yep. And then you'll be able to load your next filament in just by preheating PLA. Okay. Um, the way you turn them off is just unplug them, huh? Yep, exactly. Awesome. What other questions should I be asking? You've asked a good amount of questions, and it seems like all of the, like, I, I don't really have anything that I can think of that I definitely want to tell you. Um, 
I like these printers. I've messed with a lot of printers. I'm surprised that I like these actually. Um, they're nice wow. to courses, to be honest. You know, between you and I, uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of printers, and these are these are pretty steady. So, yeah. Oh yeah, come on, come on. Hey, what's going? Tim, how's it going? Good to see yeah, you. How are you. Good. Well, I'm just doing my first print right now. My first uh, NWA 3D printer. It's kind of fun. Cool. How did Michael do? He did great. Yeah, he's super helpful and was super clear. So I, I think I have my simplified 3D setting set up. Um, I saved it to an SD card, and we're just waiting for the dice to print out, and then I'll test that first one out. Oh, cool. Yep. So I print, I'm pretty sure we're wrapped up, to be honest. Do you have school today? No, it's a holiday. It's a Veterans Day, so they have that day off. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Sweet. Well, I think that's all for us, uh, John. So if you don't have any more questions, or if you do later on, you can always direct those at my email. Uh, you know, Tim. Would answer them, I suppose. True, and uh, you also have your link to your training, so you can always refer back to that. And then there's the manual on the SD card, and there's information in there too. Yep. Yeah, I was looking through that. That was helpful too, and I appreciate the video for the bed and everything. But it seems pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, it looks great. I just, uh, yeah, I don't really have any questions. It's, it seems like it's going to work great, um, and I'm really hoping this works out because um, this year I really it was something I'm you know I've, I've been it's always challenging to get a hundred prints in a week. You know, it's such a challenge to do that. It's hard to yeah. promise the students you can do that. So exactly. I've been that combined with the fact that I haven't had a reliable 3d modeling tool appropriate for elementary school kids has right. really limited my production value with the students with their 3d printers. But I, this year I'm really committing to using Tinkercad and having a third through fifth grade, sixth graders uh, develop uh, 3d modeling using that. And if these can output, you know, 100 files for me in a week, uh, I'd be more than happy. Awesome. Yeah. Well, good, man. I hope they do. Let us know if we can help you out any further. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too, Tim. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you yeah, so you much. Bet. Appreciate Take it, care. Sean. I hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Okay.